The discovery of the sleep-wake system has enabled us to identify the causes of Parkinson's disease and Parkinsonian syndromes, and to explain the symptoms of these conditions. With this discovery, we could not only prevent this terrible disease which affects the central nervous system, but also stop the gradual development of motor disorders. Akinesia, rarity and slowness of movements, muscular rigidity and postural instability, tremors while at rest. The dysfunction of the muscular contraction and relaxation process results in the gradual destruction of dopaminergic D1 and D2 neurons in the locus niger and the striated grey nuclei. A protein called alpha-synuclein accumulates in an abnormal manner within the cell bodies of the dopaminergic neurons. These deposits interrupt the messages transmitted by the brain. Motor symptoms only start to appear once 70% of the neurons in the locus niger have been destroyed. Parkinson's disease and Parkinsonian syndromes, such as Lewy body dementia, are caused by a significant reduction in the pineal secretion of the three hormones that form the sleep-wake system. The sleep-wake system, which regulates the body's functions, is composed of three hormones, which are secreted by the pineal gland during the night. Melatonin, or MLT, is the neuroprotective hormone. It protects the neurons from the destructive action of oxygenated free radicals. 6-methoxyharmalin, or 6-MH, has extremely high psychostimulant properties, comparable to those of LSD. It is the wake and cognition hormone and can be described as the daytime hormone. Valentonin, or VLT, is the true sleep hormone. It is the nighttime hormone. The secretion of the three sleep-wake system hormones by the pineal gland is controlled by the suprachiasmatic nucleus. At bedtime, it triggers the secretion of these three hormones by the pineal gland for a period of eight hours. For a person who customarily goes to bed at 10 p.m., the suprachiasmatic nucleus triggers the secretion of the three hormones via the nervous system for a period of eight hours. In our example, pineal secretion will end at 6 a.m. In any case, secretion of the three hormones by the pineal gland will last for eight hours, whatever the season, the period of the year, or the length of the night. In the pineal gland, the biosynthesis of the three hormones from serotonin is undertaken in three successive acetylation stages through the action of a single enzyme, N-acetyltransferase, or NAT. Melatonin being an intermediate stage in this cascade of biochemical reactions, the measurement of its concentration in blood plasma can be used as a marker for the secretion of the three pineal hormones, and therefore indicates the status of the sleep-wake system. As their biosynthesis within the pineal gland gradually progresses, the three hormones are released into the bloodstream. They are distributed throughout the body and reach their activity sites. The following shows the progression in the plasmatic concentrations of the three hormones during a 24-hour period. Two periods can be identified. A secretion period for the three hormones from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., during which the body is in sleep mode, as the concentrations of valentonin in the body are higher than those of 6-MH. A second period during which the secretion of the three pineal hormones decreases, between 6 a.m. until 10 p.m., from 6 a.m. at the end of the pineal secretion phase, melatonin and valentonin are rapidly eliminated. At this point, the prevalence of 6-MH puts the body into wake mode, which lasts until 10 p.m. Once distributed throughout the tissues of the body, the three pineal hormones undertake their actions of cellular protection and the regulation of the body's psychological and physiological activities. During the rest period, the secreted melatonin eliminates the oxygenated free radicals present in all the tissues of the body. These free radicals are produced by breathing. Two main examples of these free radicals are the superoxide anion O2- radical and the hydroxyl HO radical. These are oxygenated compounds with one single electron. They're extremely reactive and lead to the gradual destruction of the body cells and the neurons in particular. Thanks to its powerful reductive properties via the carbon atom located in position 2, the melatonin traps these free radicals by transforming itself into 2-oxomelatonin, 
which is consequently eliminated in the blood. The distribution of melatonin in brain tissue from 10 p.m. traps the oxygenated free radicals that have accumulated during the activity period. Simultaneously, these free radicals are reduced and the melatonin is oxidized into 2-oxomelatonin, which is consequently eliminated in the blood. At 6 a.m., as pineal secretion ends, nerve tissues are purified via this process. Meanwhile, valentonin and 6-methoxyharmalin reach their sites of action and in turn regulate the body's psychological and physiological activities. By selectively modulating the responses of a few receptors of the seven main neurotransmitters, and by modulating the secretions of the seven endocrine glands of the body, in this way, the pineal gland controls the functions of the endocrine glands. As with the theory of yin and yang, valentonin and 6 methoxyharmalin have opposite effects. The regulation of vigilance, blood pressure and muscle tonus are the result of the opposite actions of valentonin and 6 methoxyharmalin on the serotonergic 5-HT2C receptors the noradrenergic alpha-2 receptors and the dopaminergic D1 and D2 receptors. Between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m., valentonin lowers vigilance levels through the allosteric activation of serotonergic 5-HT2C receptors, which maintains the sleep status of our sample subject. Valentonin lowers the blood pressure and heart rate through the activation of noradrenergic alpha-2 receptors. Valentonin triggers muscular relaxation through the activation of dopaminergic D1 and D2 receptors. Inversely, between 6 a.m. and 10 p.m., the 6-MH increases vigilance by the antagonism of the serotonergic 5-HT2C receptors, which produces the effect of maintaining the state of wakefulness. 6-MH increases the blood pressure and heart rate by the antagonism of the noradrenergic alpha-2 receptors. 6-MH provokes muscular contraction by the antagonism of dopaminergic D1 and D2 receptors. Neuron protection from oxygenated free radicals and body functioning during 24 hours depends on how much of the three hormones the pineal gland secretes. As we have just seen, melatonin is a quantitative marker of this secretion. In practice, to ascertain the level of pineal secretion, the concentration of melatonin in the subject's blood plasma should be measured from 1 a.m. During a 24-hour period, we measured the pineal secretions of melatonin in 12 younger and 12 older subjects. There were considerable variations in pineal secretion levels between the various individuals. We observed a factor of 13 between the extremes of pineal secretions among the older subjects. On average, pineal secretion of melatonin declines with age. However, the record for the highest level of melatonin was found in a 73-year-old subject with a maximum plasma concentration of melatonin of 124.7 picograms per milliliter. Spectacular differences in pineal secretions may therefore occur among humans. Using melatonin levels as markers, we can consider pineal secretions as normal between 20 and 200, with an average value of 50 in a healthy young adult. Pineal secretion is excessive in psychotic subjects, with a marker probably higher than 200. Sleep disorders appear when the marker falls below 10. Subjects with a low level of pineal secretion suffer from sleep disorders and are particularly at risk of neurodegenerative diseases such as Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. As they grow older, they become victims of these diseases once their melatonin levels drop to below 5 picograms per milliliter of plasma. A significant reduction in pineal secretions is perfectly correlated with the symptoms of Parkinson's disease and Parkinsonian syndromes. 
The secretion of melatonin is insufficient to eliminate the oxygenated free radicals. This results in the gradual destruction of the dopaminergic neurons in the locus niger, illustrated by the ever-increasing presence of the alpha-synucleine protein. It accumulates in an abnormal manner within the dopaminergic neuron cell bodies in the form of insoluble filament aggregates. These deposits interrupt the messages transmitted by the brain and consequently block the synthesis of dopamine at a presynaptic level. As the disease develops, a joint decrease in the secretion of all three pineal hormones can be observed. The transmission of nerve impulses in the surviving neurons is not sufficiently modulated by the valentonin and the 6-methoxyharmalin. The same can be said for the surviving dopaminergic D1 and D2 neurons, which are involved in the muscular contraction and relaxation process. The lack of dopamine during the rest period can explain the insufficiency of muscular relaxation. While the lack of 6-methoxyharmalin during the wake period explains the motor disorders resulting from insufficient muscle contraction during the activity period. An evaluation of the pineal gland secretion capacity should be carried out from the age of 45 to detect the level of melatonin in the blood plasma. The detection of a marker showing an abnormally low level, less than 5, would provide a warning sign and enable a course of treatment to be implemented. Until the discovery of the sleep-wake system, nothing was known about the causes of Parkinson's disease or Parkinsonian syndromes. Because of this, no treatments have been found to prevent the onset of the disease, to halt its progression, or to cure it. Current treatments are aimed at compensating for the lack of dopamine in the locus niger and the striated grey nuclei, levodopa, associated with L-dopa decarboxylase inhibitors, dopaminergic agonists, which directly stimulate the dopaminergic neurons. These treatments are unsuitable and incomplete. They trigger the stimulation of all the dopaminergic neurons, which results in muscular relaxation 24 hours a day. The insufficiency of muscular contraction during the day is therefore left untreated. In fact, it is actually made worse. The only feasible treatment is replacement therapy via the administration of the three hormones aimed at compensating for the defective pineal gland. The hormones must therefore be administered during the pineal gland secretion period during the night. The melatonin should be administered orally at night at bedtime in a 3 mg dose. This dose is sufficient to ensure the elimination of the oxygenated free radicals during the night. The valentonin and 6-methoxyharmalin must be administered in a combination during the rest period, which lasts approximately 8 hours. Administration methods are extremely critical. They must be capable of reproducing as precisely as possible the physiological secretion curves of the two hormones by the pineal gland. In practice, the only solution is transdermal administration in the form of a patch with two reservoirs associating valentonin and 6-methoxyharmalin with a dose ratio of 4 to 1 in order to fulfill these conditions. The patch should be applied at night, at bedtime, and should be removed in the morning upon rising. This ensures that the sleep and wake modes are respected. This treatment consists of hormone replacement therapy using natural hormones in order to compensate for the deficiency in pineal gland secretions. Administered during the secretion period of eight hours, the doses are 100 micrograms of 6-methoxyharmalin and 400 micrograms of valentonin, corresponding to the physiological secretions. This treatment guarantees the absence of undesirable side effects. If the disease is treated early enough, patients should recover their motor functions and normal sleep patterns, together with the other psychic functions that are frequently altered by Parkinsonian syndromes. Given the precise roles played by valentonin and 6-methoxyharmalin in body functions, we can legitimately claim that no better treatment for this disease can be considered.